So we are joined today by Kevin McSweeney. Uh, he's a vice president and uh, portfolio manager with Signature Global Asset Management. And his area of focus are, is in infrastructure investments. Kevin, how are you today? I'm doing great, Darius. How are you doing? Very, very good. Um, Kevin, lots of talk. I wanted to, to, to cover a bit the infrastructure subject with you. Um, uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff and uh, it's, 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 it's an area that's going to see a secular growth from all the pension money that's coming and uh, uh, more recently the plan that Biden has to increase the infrastructure spending. So um, I'm going to hand you hand you the baton, take it from there. Uh, tell me what do you see that's exciting? What do you see changing in this environment over the next few years? Sure, a uh, uh, great open question and thank you, for, uh, thank you for the opportunity to chat with you. You know, when we're talking about pipelines or uh, <laughs> infrastructure, pardon me, uh, the first one I'm gonna talk about is pipelines. Uh, we talk about it as pipelines, you know, or, or midstream energy, bringing energy from energy producers to consumers like you or me, the gas coming into our house. Uh, utilities that provide us with water, with power, with uh, um, uh, gas as well, that actually provided gas on a local basis, so utilities, but also increasingly they're providing power generation. Uh, you know, you used to think of it as a coal plant, but now it's renewable. So that's one of the things that, that we are excited about as a growth uh, vector. And after that, there's transportation. Now this is a more exciting area of the market, particularly when you think about how we've all been locked down and we haven't been able to take vacations, a lot of airports around the world are publicly traded. We can invest in them with, with public stocks. You or I can just buy a Paris airport or a Sydney airport stock, which we sometimes do. Uh, but toll roads uh, as well are out there. And then the, the fourth one uh, is telecommunications. Now this isn't like a Rogers or a Bell that, that customers pay money into every month. It's the people that provide the backbone or the network to the Bell or the Rogers around the world. Uh, it might be a cell phone tower company that's publicly traded. It might be we own a fiber network in Singapore that's an amazing company that operates almost like a utility. So within infrastructure, we always have some opportunity to play for, uh, you know, some economic growth with the energy or with, uh, say, railways or airports or toll roads that as more people are driving, flying or consuming energy, when we're in an economic growth era, we can invest in those. When we wanna be a little bit more defensive, we can invest in things that you just know that there's a consistent cash flow there. Data growth is obviously very important and we're all using our cell phones and our internet more, you know, with, again, with the lockdown, uh, but utilities always provide a very consistent cash flow along the way. So within those four areas, I think uh, we can provide exciting stocks or we have exciting opportunities within there because you always wanna be careful on price. I'd say the two big things that we're most excited about long-term that provide growth. And the, you know, growth has been very difficult to find in this world with difficult economic times. Uh, but the two things that I think we're very confident on with growth are renewable energy and data consumption. And so we have tilted the portfolio. There's been a bit of a kickback trade in some stocks that have been beaten down from last year. But overall, I think when we look around the capital markets and we say, where can we catch on to some growth that's very certain with some very good companies at reasonable valuation, we're looking into renewable energy as well as data growth. So whether it be a data center that's housing all of the, the data that we consume, your YouTubes, your, you know, maybe this video itself, uh, uh, or, or cell phone towers as we try to fill in different areas to make sure that speeds are adequate, that coverage is better as people are in the suburbs uh, or that congestion doesn't happen. So the two areas, we have exciting companies in all of those uh, subsectors of infrastructure, but I would say that the renewable energy and the telecom sectors are the areas that we're probably most excited about over the medium to long term. Right. So on the, on the renewable, I mean, this is uh, ESG and renewable, and we know what happened with the price of uh, uh, solar electricity last year. The, these are buzzwords. It's, I can see mm -hmm. that as uh, the growth portion of the portfolio. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about infrastructure, when you're talking about utilities, you're more so looking for a bond proxy to a certain extent with the situation with, you know, um, 
investing in bonds these days it's probably not the not the not the best approach so everybody's looking for alternatives so would this be an alternative to investing in bonds based on your management style absolutely and so one of the things that's happened is you know oftentimes people grew up with the idea that you put 60 percent of your portfolio into stocks and you put 40 percent into government bonds and that's just a baseline portfolio for everybody that used to be they used to make sense when you know you could lend to canada at five percent six percent for ten years and that would be above and inflation was higher in those days uh but you were still making more than inflation right now uh canadian government bonds as well as u.s government bonds and bonds all around the world don't provide an income that's in excess of inflation so that's a problem if you are going to invest in that 10-year bond you're going to lose what we call purchasing power. You're going to, you know, you're, you might make 1% on it, but the price of everything around your country has gone up by 2%. So your standard of living is actually lower. Within renewables, within utilities and other areas of infrastructure, you know, we have high quality companies that will be, that pay and will be paying for a long time, four, five, six, seven percent dividends out of their stocks, you know, so, to the extent you would have said, I like government bonds because they provide me with income, the, the decline in government bond yields with the Bank of Canada and the US Federal Reserve taking interest rates below, um, below inflation. What you've seen is you have to do something in your portfolio to make sure that the risk of you not making enough money, like there's the risk of your portfolio going down. That is a risk and, and, and that is an issue. But there's also a risk that people need to get their heads around that you're not going to make enough money to meet your retirement goals. What infrastructure can do is actually provide payouts with very safe cash flows, uh, very long term cash flows, monopolies, and sometimes they have a regulated return and regulated cash flows from government entities because they're monopolies that just say, I'm going to sit here and as you know, this electricity flows through my network or as this gas through, flows through my pipeline, I have, a very good, um, I have a very good high margin business and I can pay out that four, five, six percent. That's what the company does, that's why I buy it, and that's why your clients should be interested in this asset class because it actually either funds their income in retirement or it provides a higher level of returns if they're on their way towards that retirement. Right, right. And I, I, I think that's a really good point because that 60-40 portfolio, typical portfolio, it's, it just does not stand. And uh, um, you know, for us as, as advisors, it's a very tough decision between, let's say, allocating to bonds or not because as interest rates will increase, the bond prices will drop. So it's sort of yes. a certain things that thing that you know will be losing money in the in the portfolio. So obviously we're talking here infrastructure. This is this is a bit of a bond proxy in terms of volatility. Uh, when interest rates increase, this is something that uh, um, uh, that does good as well. And it's just that yep. anchor in the portfolio that uh, reduces the volatility. Now, um, in terms of, um, you know, I guess on everybody's mind, the big stimulus package that Biden is uh, um, um, proposing, how, mm -hmm. how does that affect your investments? Where do you see opportunities in terms of uh, um, um, investing in that? I think um, the way I would summarize it is that we were already there. So when a lot of, uh, some of Biden's plan is, you know, sort of social infrastructure, which would be, you know, long-term care homes and improving that, which is obviously very important on the social side, but a little less investable. For me on the infrastructure plan, it validates as a very important social um, goal, some of the things that we've already been invested in. So he came out and he said, we need a broadband strategy. Uh, you know, internet has become the new toll road, it's become the new utility. It is something that you need to participate in the economy as much as, a, as, much as electricity. So his broadband funding uh, is something that's going to benefit our holdings, uh, such as Crown Castle, such as SBA Communications uh, in, in the US that are cell phone telecom infrastructure corporations. So we were already in those names, knowing that there's a huge build from data consumption going through. On the renewable side, what we've done is we've positioned the portfolio. We're staying away from those companies that 
uh, have, have been in coal. You know, coal is obviously going away. Uh, and pivoting more to those companies that are involved in renewables, building wind firms, building solar firms, taking advantage of hydro, hydro, hydro imports, uh, hydropower, you know, the water building dams, we're very blessed with that here in Canada. So we were positioned in things like Nextera, which is the largest, uh, one of the largest renewable companies in the world, which would be like the equivalent, it was the old Florida Power and Light, so it was the main Florida electric utility. They've embraced renewables, and you can see from the share chart that they have been rewarded handsomely by being ahead of the curve on that. We've invested in Sempra, which is the old San Diego gas and electric. California is at the vanguard. It's at the very point of legislating on environmental emissions. Sometimes they go a little too far because you've seen the brownouts uh, and blackouts over the last, over last summer. Um, but they get it, and so they're building these renewables and every time they build them, the government, the way the government operates is they say, if you build, you know, $100 worth of assets, we're going to allow you to make seven or eight bucks of, or nine bucks of profit on that. And so they have a very nice incentive to build. And that drops into the uh, portfolios here. So the Biden infrastructure plan is very interesting in that it validates um, that there is a future direction embraced and endorsed uh, that we had already been on. And I would say that, by the way, just, you know, we have similar companies, Iridrola out of Spain, RWE out of Germany, Enel out of Italy. This is a global phenomenon. And we have a global set of assets and global expertise where we talk to these companies and the same way that Biden wants to push build back better with a green focus. That's what the EU is doing with its recovery fund. Canada is doing it little bit with a variety of policy measures. Even over in Asia, you've seen an embrace of renewables. That provides the growth, and that's what's, uh, what's one of the more exciting things in our portfolio. Right. So, um, yeah, you mentioned Crown Castle. That's, that's a very good 5G play. They're probably... Mm -hmm. If you understand 5G, there's yes. going to be a lot of talk. I'm not, I know you. I know you do <laughs> much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm happy. I'm glad you're mentioning towers it that are going to be uh, built with the new 5G technology. You mentioned Nextera. I mean, uh, the the CEO was saying that you know they don't have a green agenda for them. It's it's just so cheap to invest in solar power and uh, getting those incentives from the government. So it's truly an exciting. I wouldn't even call it the you know a boring let's say portfolio or bond proxy because that that area the ESG and data is. Um, uh, just going, you know, take take a front seat, strap in, and enjoy the ride because over the next ten years we're going to see a lot of exciting stuff. Now, for the more so. boring uh, part of the portfolio, you mentioned, for example, yeah. airports, and I can't think how, you know, hard of a time that uh, uh, that must have been um, uh, to be invested in something like that in a perfect storm like last year. Uh, are you holding on the positions? Are you, uh, ha have you made changes? What happened to that portion of the portfolio last year? Sure, we, um, we fortunately, we, we reduced our airports quite a bit in February, um, sold, sold out of some positions, Frankfurt Airport. Um, we reduced some energy. We have, we have one that we still hold, Ferro Vial. We sold, uh, which your clients would be familiar with, Highway 407, they're the operator of that. They may, may not be driving on it as much as they were a couple of years ago, but uh, still, still a good value here. We sold a decent amount of risk in February of last year ahead of the big, uh, the big decline, and we were a category leader. We did a good job last year protecting clients' money. Um, the airports, we, we, were, we are underweight. We do hold Sydney Airport, uh, Sydney out of uh, the uh, Sydney Australia Airport Company. It was just an excellent company, and Australia, obviously, when you read the headlines, they benefit from being an island, but they've done a great job um, locking down on COVID and they actually have a lot of domestic passengers. Some of our European airports, which we don't hold, uh, need a lot of international passengers. And obviously right now, you know, moving within a country is very different than moving across uh, international borders. So we're underweight, uh, you know, we hold Sydney Airport. We hold two companies, Ferro Vial in Spain is one of them. Another one is Vinci out of France that operate airports, but they also operate toll roads and they also have a construction arm. We're okay with the airport exposure because we think there's going to be a lot of stimulus coming that will help their construction segments. And, and we've seen that through their, through their results 
and through the government initiatives to stimulate the economy, we think that they're good deals on the construction side and, and okay on the airport exposure. I'm looking very carefully. I think the summer, the summer, this summer for Europe is going to be a big question mark. Uh, I think that you know sometimes some people rush in and you know when the Pfizer vaccine happened in November, that news on that day, you know many airport stocks went up a ton saying, I want to travel, my friends want to travel, I'm going to go see my friends and my family and take a vacation. And we saw, we, we didn't chase that. You know, again, there are macroeconomic phenomena and then there's how much do you want to pay for them on a per share basis. And we said, you know what, you're pricing in a little too much optimism because the vaccine is going to take time to roll out. We don't know, you know, we don't know how quickly it can be manufactured, deployed, logistics. And we we're seeing that play out, you know, painfully here in Canada, uh, but around the world as well. So w w I, have my, I have my price targets. I see that, you know, at some point in the future, you're going to have a lot of growth in the airport space. Right now, I'm looking at it as I don't want to pay too much uh, for something that isn't completely certain on the timing. Okay. Okay. I love it. Um, Kevin, very, very excited and grateful for, uh, um, for joining us today. Um, what would be before, before I let you go, I know you have a very busy day ahead of you. What would be your, let's say recommended asset allocation to something like infrastructure in a portfolio? Probably, um, 10 to 15% is really what, what we're saying. And a lot of that is you take it, you take it a lot from the government bond side where you're not getting that income and you might not get a correlation. And if inflation fears do come through, you'll be experiencing losses from that. I, I take, you know, any Canadian can download the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board's annual report, and that will show you that um, the Canada Pension Plan, which had 20 years ago had been in almost exclusively government bonds, is now at about 13% allocated to infrastructure. Um, they're doing that because there's lower volatility, there's more consistent cash flows, there's higher yields, and, and you know, you have good companies with good positions uh, in the market. So I do think 10 to 15%, it obviously depends on whether you're income seeking, you might want a little bit more if you're growth seeking, maybe you want a little bit less. But I think when you look at what large institutional investors are doing, they tend to move ahead of what retail investors, you know, like you, me, your clients do. And so 10 to 15% feels pretty good. And if rates stay at this low level, and we still see the bargains that we're seeing right now, I'd feel very comfortable even, even saying a little bit more. You can also pair it with real estate. Real estate uh, is also a little bit challenged in, in some of the sectors. But if you say 20 to 25% between real estate and infrastructure, that's a very good allocation. And it's one that's very well justified by the example from these large institutional pension funds. Excellent. Kevin, again, very grateful. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy your day. Darius, thank you so much for having me. Cheers. Thank you.